du prof ici à Paris 8 et je suis également membre de l'association de solidarité avec les universitaires pour la paix et euh, on est très heureux avec le département de cinéma et donc euh, on va avoir euh, quelques mots mais, euh, et aussi avec l'association euh, Sud DDHT, ce qui est un nom un peu compliqué mais en gros c'est la solidarité avec les universitaires de Turquie euh, d'accueillir euh, je prononce mal son nom mais l'intention est c'est euh, très important pour nous c'est très important pour euh, nous de l'accueillir nous en l'occurrence euh, c'est le laboratoire d'études de genre et de sexualité euh, auquel je suis rattaché, le département d'études de genre. Alors, pourquoi les études de genre bah, D'une part parce que le film qu'on va voir ce soir, ça a des rapports bien évidemment avec ce qu'on fait, mais aussi parce que, indépendamment des études de genre ou pas, euh, on essaie de s'impliquer beaucoup dans ces questions de solidarité internationale euh, avec euh, les collègues de Turquie, mais aussi euh, dans d'autres pays, au Brésil et ailleurs. Et donc, pour nous, c'est très important. Donc, ma collègue Caroline Ibos souhaitait être présente. Elle, elle ne peut pas parce qu'elle est souffrante ce soir, mais elle tient à dire au nom de notre laboratoire tout son soutien, moi au nom du département euh, d'études de genre. Et puis aussi Sophie Bauquier, euh, qui s'occupe du programme PAUSE en particulier, c'est-à-dire euh, de l'accueil des universitaires en danger euh, en France, qui ne peut pas être là non plus, mais qui a suivi tout ça très attentivement. Euh, exprime également son soutien à cette soirée. Donc en gros, on est juste là pour dire qu'on soutient fortement nos collègues et qu'on est heureux euh, de voir le film et d'accueillir Charles Jandon. Merci beaucoup euh, Eric. Alors moi je prends la parole euh, au nom du département de cinéma. Certains d'entre vous en font partie en tant qu'étudiants. Je suis très très content de vous voir ici. Euh, est, on est au cœur en fait, du département ici puisque on est dans la salle de projection qui est aussi une salle de cours hein, pour nous. Euh, donc on est très content de t'accueillir Eric, c'est ton initiative, cette euh, projection. C'est assez rare qu'on mette en place justement des synergies entre nos deux départements, celui de genre et celui de cinéma, donc c'était vraiment un plaisir d'accepter euh, cette proposition via aussi euh, l'initiative de Jennifer Verraes qui m'a donc demandé d'intervenir, étant donné que mes champs de recherche aussi recoupent eh bien, le cinéma et les questions de genre et de sexualité dans d'autres contextes que la Turquie, mais, euh, on aura l'occasion pendant le débat d'en reparler. Euh, vous dire euh, donc bienvenue et surtout euh, vous dire que donc euh, on va voir un film qui n'a pas été euh, diffusé en France euh, jusqu'à maintenant. C'est un film inédit pour beaucoup. Euh, vous allez découvrir un peu euh, sa teneur. Euh, on aura l'occasion d'en reparler. Euh, je l'ai dit tout à l'heure, mais vous dire quand même que euh, c'est un film qui date de 2013, me semble-t-il, mm -hmm. si je ne me trompe oui. pas. Euh, donc c'est un film à la fois récent et lointain. Euh, récent parce qu'il parle quand même de la Turquie des années 2010 et donc euh, des années euh, extrêmement importantes euh, sur le plan de la militance LGBT puisque euh, euh, des euh, groupes se sont formés à ce moment-là il euh, euh, y avait vraiment un, un, un mouvement très important euh, eh bien, à, à l'égard de ces euh, de, de, en tout cas des revendications d'égalitarisation des droits etc. Et en même temps, on peut mesurer, et ça sera aussi pendant le débat, je pense, l'occasion de le faire, mesurer l'écart qu'il y a entre 2013 et 2021, en termes, non pas d'égalitarisation des droits, mais plutôt de défaite de certaines revendications, avec donc de plus en plus de politiques qui vont à l'encontre de la possibilité même de vivre et d'aimer en tant qu'homosexuel dans le contexte turc. Donc on aura l'occasion de le voir, mais le film voilà, est extrêmement émouvant, euh, extrêmement personnel aussi, et puis il a cette euh, valeur en fait de prendre le problème de biais d'une certaine manière, puisque ce ne sont pas des homosexuels eux-mêmes qui sont interrogés, mais leurs parents, donc c'est la question de la transmission, c'est la question de l'expérience généalogique qui se pose aussi, c'est plus globalement un portrait d'une euh, certaine classe aussi de la société turque, qui euh, à la fois prend en charge le problème de, euh, de l'homosexualité et qui en même temps essaie de lutter eh bien, contre euh, toutes les, les politiques discriminatoires et, et conservatrices qui peuvent avoir lieu sur, sur ce territoire. Donc c'est un film important, c'est un film précieux, et c'est d'autant plus précieux que vous êtes là, Jan Dan Dan, pour euh, le mettre en perspective. On aura l'occasion avec Eric euh, ensuite donc, de, de dialoguer, aussi avec vous bien sûr. Donc n'hésitez pas euh, à intervenir pendant le débat tout à l'heure. Je vous souhaite une très bonne projection. Je laisse la parole à Jan Dan Dan, et surtout à Shalvan qui donc, va nous parler de, de, de son action pour euh, donc, euh, 
la réhabilitation de, de, de certains professeurs qui sont aujourd'hui euh, mis en cause. Oui, euh, je vais parler en anglais. Euh, Les questions tout à l'heure pourront aussi être posées soit en anglais, soit en soit français, français, soit même en turc. Oui. Uh, hello everyone, I would like to welcome everybody here. Uh, to, uh, and I'm here to represent our association, Türk Deli uh, that was founded in 2017 to, uh, to defend, uh, to protect, uh, or to help uh, the uh, Academic for Peace group in Turkey and the human rights in general. Um, and I'm here to also uh, welcome John Zemzan, of course, and uh, I'm, I'm very, very honored to be here as a Boğaziçi University alumni myself. And, um, and yeah, so, uh, and also, of course, I would like to thank uh, Eric and uh, Matthew uh, for, the, for their talks. And uh, so we are here tonight for, of course, John Zemzan's um, team uh, projection and um, Uh, if you have any questions uh, about our association, uh, please, uh, you can al always uh, chat to us and um, also after the trip in general. And, uh, and we are here in France, uh, of course, we have been following what's been going on at Boazic University since the beginning of this year. Uh, and uh, even though we are physically here, of course, we are always following. Uh, and uh, as I said, as an alumni myself, I've been My heart has been uh, has been there always, and uh, so that's why I'm I'm very very honored to have a young gentleman with us uh, to represent um, uh, that resistance with us. Um, that's it. I hope you enjoy the film, and uh, thank you very much. Gentlemen, do you want to say? Yes, I words? just would like to say uh, hello and welcome to everyone. Merhaba. Uh, <laughs> And uh, I also would like to thank my hosts for making this evening uh, possible and my visit possible to, uh, to Paris. And uh, I'm very glad, as, uh, as Mathieu said, that this film hasn't been shown in France that much. And it's not being distributed in France. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to, uh, this, to this chance to uh, watch the film with you, uh, because it's part of our Uh, job in a way and experience as, as filmmakers to um, watch our films with the audience uh, because you know that's part of filmmaking uh, to kind of sense how the audience receives the film and to have a chance to discuss the film with the audience so I'm very uh, happy that I'm able to attend the screening uh, and uh, Just to uh, remind everyone, I guess, that uh, filmmaking is a teamwork. So I'm here to represent uh, my film, but uh, there are hundreds of people who made this film possible. Uh, and so every time this film is screened, uh, their work is also honored and, and uh, appreciated. So I'm very glad about that. Uh, and. Uh, Of course, I'm also part of the Boazici University resistance that's been going on for the last 11 months. Um, and uh, the uh, student uh, LGBTI plus uh, club at Boazici University have been uh, uh, terminated uh, by the appointed rector on uh, February 1st. And I was the faculty advisor of the student club on campus. Uh, but of course, closing closure of a student club doesn't uh, erase the fact that uh, there are LGBTI plus students, uh, there are LGBTI plus faculty, uh, employees at Boston University and alumni, and uh, LGBTI plus people Uh, continue to uh, exist and be part of the university and continue with their work. So in that sense, the uh, closure of a student club is in practice meaningless. Uh, so I just wanted to mention that and make that connection with the film and the current situation at, at Boazici. Uh, I'm going to end here. I hope you like the film and I'm looking forward to discussing it with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Euh, alors c'est un film qui en 
en deux parties, vous avez vu, une partie qui est vraiment euh, une partie de témoignage. Et ce qui est assez intéressant, c'est que vous avez vraiment sélectionné euh, à la fois les personnes et en même temps les parties euh, des, des éléments sans doute beaucoup plus larges que vous aviez enregistrés. Donc on sent qu'il y a un vrai travail de, de sélection. Euh, et peut-être vous allez revenir un petit peu justement sur comment vous avez à la, à la fois sélectionné ces personnes, même si ça devient évident au cours du film, mais surtout comment vous allez sélectionner ces, ces paroles pour les construire. Parce que la vraie spécificité du film, c'est quand même de nous amener aux acteurs euh, euh, homosexuels, transsexuels, transgenres, euh, qui sont dans une seconde partie, partir de l'expérience des parents pour arriver d'une certaine façon aux enfants, pour revenir à la fin quand même à la question de l'engagement des, des parents. Je voudrais du coup vous poser une question par rapport au titre du film. Benim Jojoum, donc ça veut dire mon enfant, qui n'a pas du coup de genre, hein, ce terme-là, enfin c'est masculin, mais euh, il n'y a pas de... Enfin je veux dire c'est un nom masculin mais qui ne correspond pas à une identité sexuelle. J'imagine que c'est lié justement à la démarche du film. Euh, le fait justement de considérer d'abord la généalogie, c'est-à-dire la solidarité euh, d'une génération à l'autre plutôt qu'un genre sexuel euh, prédéfini par le sexe. Donc d'emblée on est dans la question du genre, en vérité, euh, avec ce titre. Est -ce que, euh, enfin, quand est-ce que vous est venue cette idée du coup, de traiter cette question à partir de la paternité et de la maternité Est-ce que c'est possible en anglais pour, pour tout le monde Pour les gens, ça dérange. Sinon, on traduit un petit peu. Non, ça va Je ne comprends pas trop en anglais, mais je vais essayer de comprendre. Bon, vous nous dites sinon. Ok. So, you... so, so the first question, uh, how, did, how did I choose uh, these people uh, It's, I think, related to the second question as well, which is... Uh, How, why did I choose to approach the subject matter from the perspective of the parents, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's all... Uh, the starting point is an experience that I had, which was uh, at Bosch University, where I teach. Uh, in the year 2010, October, the month of October, there was a... Uh, There was a conference that was uh, organized by our Cultural Studies uh, Master's Program. And the title of the conference was uh, Trans Identities and Queer in Turkey. Uh, as a faculty person, I received the brochure, which was the program of the conference. And I looked at the brochure, and uh, everything was pretty much what I knew about. Uh, but there was one panel that really surprised me, and it said the parents of LGBTs, at that time it was just four letters, LGBTs, were going to talk about their experiences. And I was really surprised to read that there was a panel where the parents would speak. And um, as a parent myself, I was very curious to go and listen to these Uh, to this panel. So I went there and there were four people sitting uh, like us. Well, there was a table too. Uh, a large uh, room with uh, a sizable audience and the parents started talking about their experiences and I was extremely moved by these stories. I was so moved that I was sitting in the back like you uh, over there <laughs> uh, and I started crying. And I was crying and crying and crying and listen to the, listening to these stories. And I was asking myself, you know, why am I so moved by these stories? And I started to realize that I was sitting there with two identities. I was there as, a, as an adult child. And these, when I was he uh, hearing these stories, these stories were bringing me, bringing me back to my own childhood. Uh, to my struggle with my parents, to be myself. And I felt that that is an experience that everybody uh, has. 
in relation to their parents or those adults that they consider to be parents or the adults who assume that role. And uh, through the uh, um, institution of family, uh, the expectations that the society has uh, about the individuals, uh, those expectations are passed on to the child through the family. And uh, willingly or uh, um, consciously or not, uh, those expectations are there, I think. And so I was remembering my own childhood as an adult person sitting there, remembering my own childhood and the, the struggles that I was having with my own parents. Um, so that was one part of it. And the other identity that I was sitting there as a father. I had my own child at that time. I still have him. Uh, and I was asking myself as I was listening to these stories, uh, was I being a good enough parent? Was I able to uh, allow him to be himself? Or was I also uh, bringing all these expectations from the society onto him? Uh, so I was questioning my own uh, parent role as a parent. Um, so that was the kind of the emotional uh, part of it. And at the same time, uh, I was more on an, inter on, an inter on an intellectual level, trying to reflect on what was happening here. We're in Turkey in a society with a very high level of homophobia and transphobia. As you see in the film, uh, it was the year when uh, Iram Okan was murdered, a transsexual woman. Uh, so these parents were talking publicly about their experiences. And they were, uh, I felt that this was revolutionary in a place like Turkey at that time for these parents to publicly uh, speak about this. So I felt a tremendous, um, this was a tremendous intervention, I think, I thought, on their part. And as a documentary filmmaker sitting in the audience, I immediately felt that uh, I have to do something about this. And as a documentary filmmaker, the best thing I can do is to um, make a documentary film with them so that these stories would be heard by a very large group of uh, people, general public. So the idea was to make a film uh, and construct it in such a way that it would be, um, it would kind of target a general uh, uh, audience. So that was the starting point of, of, of this film and that's why I decided to approach the subject from the perspective of the parents. Um, and kind of replicate the experience I had. Because during that panel, they were talking about their children and their experiences of um, being parents of LGBTI uh, plus people, uh, children, uh, but the children weren't there, so it was from their perspective. So I kind of had wanted to replicate that experience. And I wanted to, to kind of uh, increase the impact uh, of these stories, because there, there's four of them, large audience, and I wanted them. I wanted this experience to be a bit more private, uh, in a way, to create a situation where um, these parents would take you, uh, sit you down right across from you, uh, like as if in a small cafe with a small table, so very close to you, and would look at you in the eye and tell you about their stories. Uh, so that was why I you know, chose this approach. And back to the first question, why did I choose these people? Um, this family group, Listag, uh, you can imagine it as an as a iceberg. So the parents who are active on a daily basis and visible and public are only the tip of the iceberg. So the seven people that you see in the film are the core group that makes that the, the, the tip of the iceberg. There are thousands of families in Turkey who are part of this duck, but at that time, only these seven uh, parents, and then also a couple of others in the 
group uh, therapy session who were willing to be um, visible. And the seven people were the core group who were very active, who were the active ones in the group. So I didn't really need to choose anyone. Uh, they were the seven active members, and here you go, in the middle we have the uh, seven members. Uh, so uh, sometimes people ask me, you know, why did I, why didn't I, uh, you know, include, let's say, in, as a main character in the film, a parent of a lesbian woman. Well, it wasn't. There wasn't a, a parent of a lesbian woman in the core group, so I didn't uh, include them. Um, so in terms of, you know, the representation of different um, components of LGBTI uh, plus identities, I included as main characters the ones that were uh, in the main four group. Alors, ce qui est intéressant, c'est que du coup, on part vraiment d'expériences très individuelles. On part vraiment même de portraits en fait de ses parents. Et plus le film avance, et plus on atteint une sorte d'expérience collective nationale, même à la fin, puisque elles atteignent, enfin, que les, cette revendication atteint le Parlement, euh, ce qui est évidemment inimaginable aujourd'hui. Euh, Eric, est-ce que tu as été sensible, toi, à, à ce portrait Parce que c'est à la fois sur une des expériences individuelles et sur une expérience militante. Effectivement, mais peut-être que je vais dire en anglais si ça vous dérange pas, pour faciliter la tâche à côté de moi. Yeah, maybe you can switch it. Maybe. Just to pursue on, on what Mathieu was saying, um, I, I was struck by two things. Uh, one is, as you just said, the fact that it's a movement from the individual to the collective, but also at first we don't see the connection between the different parents. We see individual parents. We see my child and becomes our children progressively. So we see that these people can be uh, the parents of the same child or that actually they know one another that at some point they met together. So it's not just that there's the beginning individuals and the end, the collective, but we see the process, uh, which I think is very striking. But the second remark, which is related, is that when we see that, uh, we may have this feeling of progress, emancipation, and it's a narrative uh, which the historian uh, Gay New York, George Chauncey, calls a Whiggish history, a history of progress. Uh, but in fact, as also uh, I think Matthew said before we started, um, progress is not just a movement of history, uh, it's temporary. So I was wondering if you wanted to return to that, that is the, the, the movement of the film is the movement of that moment, mm -hmm. but it's not just a movement of history. Yeah, as in the sense of much has changed since then. Mm -hmm. And not for the better. Not for the better, yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Um, yeah, uh, I was very impressed uh, by this uh, story, obviously, because not only these individuals, uh, through the, of course, help of their own children who are active, are brought together and uh, when they come together uh, they become a support uh, group for each other uh, so they start feeling that that they are not alone that there are other parents who experience similar things and from that uh, uh, moment on uh, they start this journey uh, of kind of uh, self-education Uh, they learn to be parents of LGBTI plus uh, children. They get professional help. Um, <coughs> they read about it, they discuss it. Uh, and then uh, I was really impressed by that story of, in a way, self-education and, and, and uh, self-advancement. Uh, and I was also very impressed that it didn't stop there, that they, they didn't just stop at place of accepting their children for who they are but they also uh, learned to become activists not for their children's rights only but the rights of all LGBTI plus people so I was very actually impressed uh, by that and uh, so the film uh, and these stories uh, and the film at that time in 2013 when we finished it 
of course, tell a story of um, hope that things are progressing, <coughs> things are getting better. Uh, but it also, I think, uh, tells the story that uh, even though the parents who accept their children for who they are, and parents who are activists for LGBT and plus rights, even though they are a minority, they are a small group uh, that exists within this huge society filled with homophobia and transphobia, they still exist. So in a way, the film says that, I think as, as a kind of a message, uh, that this kind of a family is possible. And not only it's possible, it's, it exists. So sometimes, you know, I get criticism uh, that says, uh, well, you know, this doesn't reflect the real situation in Turkey. Uh, you know, there's so much homophobia and transphobia, you know, uh, these hate crimes, people are getting killed, etc., etc. Well, of course, that's a reality, but this is also a reality. Uh, and I wanted to talk about this reality because the other part of that reality, the, the horror, the violence, uh, etc., etc., uh, that's the uh, that's what we know about. This reality we don't know about, and I wanted to represent this reality as, in a way, a light, uh, maybe like at the end of the tunnel, so to speak. Um, and of course, a lot has changed between uh, 2013 <coughs> and uh, 2021 right now. Um, well, uh, one thing. Uh, after the film was completed, we had the Gezi uprising, the Gezi Park uprising in Turkey, which was a very uh, significant uh, historical moment and, um, uh, in, in, in Turkey. Uh, in the film, you see the 2012 Pride March, of course. Uh, 50,000 people walked, approximately. Next year, 2013, uh, uh, during the Gezi uprising, uh, three times more people walked. Imagine this crowd times three. 150,000 people walked on that main street in Istanbul. In 2014, again, uh, a significant number of people, maybe 100,000 uh, people walked on that main street. And then they banned uh, Pride marches. Uh, but that doesn't uh, mean that people don't get together and try to march uh, on that day. Uh, there are usually clashes with the police uh, since then, since 2015. Um, it, it, it seems uh, on the surface things are getting worse. On a daily basis, yes, things are getting worse in the sense of are we able to have a pride march like freely? No, we, we, we're not able to do that at the moment. Uh, is it uh, are parents of LGBTI people able to visit the parliament these days? No. So in that sense, uh, things have not uh, progressed for the best. Uh, but um, what I think also important to remember that um, what we experienced, and, and, and this film shows part of that uh, in the years uh, up until 2015 maybe, um, that uh, the society is, to a large extent, I think, in Turkey, is ready for this progress. Uh, for example, uh, just to give you a more concrete example, when we finished the film, we thought that the mainstream media would not be interested in the film, uh, and uh, we will not get much press uh, coverage. It was just the opposite. Uh, we got tremendous press coverage in Turkey and uh, positive uh, press coverage and we were very surprised that uh, this, this, this was happening uh, and we got really wonderful feedback uh, if we got thousand messages from so, you know, social media channels 998 of those were positive messages we only got uh, kind of hate messages. Uh, so I think all those things showed uh, us at that time at least that the society is ready for this. 
And if a society, I think, is ready for this, um, I think uh, going back, in a way, uh, regression is only temporary. Uh, that that moment stays in in the memory of that of that society. Uh, so in that sense, I I feel like yes, things haven't gotten better uh, since then over the last uh, at least six years, the last six years. But um, in a way, that potential is dormant. That uh, we're going to be able to have the five marches freely in Turkey in the future, uh, and I think it's not in the very long. Um, and so I'm, I'm kind of hopeful, even though uh, things haven't uh, progressed for the better. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe there are questions already? Yes? The questions are going to be in the language of your choice. Yeah, so uh, thank you very much for this panel. And um, actually, I'm very glad to have uh, discovered this film because I'm writing about uh, so the history of, of uh, LGBT movements in China. And uh, the biggest association in the country is the Association of Parents. So actually, I've just written an article about two activist mothers. And so, um, yeah, I'm very happy to uh, um, well learn about this and, and watch this film. Um, I have so many questions, so maybe the first one that I'm going to ask you is uh, how can we, how can I learn more about these uh, lovely people? And uh, and then I'll just, uh, um, well, I have a flurry of questions. You can well, choose. the first, first question is very simple. They have an internet site. Uh, it yes. also is in English. Okay. If you look look up for Listak, uh, uh, you know, L-I-S-T-A-G-E, you'll be able yes. to reach them, yeah. Okay, thank you. And so, um, well, you just mentioned that we have to learn to be activists, we are not born activists. So maybe my first question is like, when you found them, when you interviewed them, when was it and the, how long have they been activists mm -hmm. at that moment? Because I remember they're trained by professionals, so the, the support has been. Well, I, I mean, when we started uh, doing the activism, uh, it's not the same thing we say. A few years later. So, uh, and the second thing you also mentioned about this uh, very touching emotion, you know, bonding between parents and children. I'm not an expert on Turkish society. I'm just wondering, this kind of this level of understanding is that normal? Is that common to parents and children? Uh, like how how the, the way that um, we uh, first uh, imagine this question, the question of parent-child relationship. Is that something normal? Because uh, in China, for example, the first question that came up, actually, uh, someone did uh, a documentary about, about Chinese parents and Chinese mothers, also uh, more than fathers. Uh, and the first uh, image he showed was this mother asking herself how she going to live in the society now that she has a homosexual child. The social stigma is the biggest question uh, these parents are facing. So in this film, we see some of that, but it's not the central question. The central question is like, how do I deal with this, uh, my child? That That is the most important. So I wonder, is that a choice in the filmmaking, or is that like some, uh, yeah. And uh, so maybe just to finish, and about the social standing. And just precise that they, they, we can organize a, a meeting with them. <laughs> 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 I mean, you know, you can, you academic can interview are questions. possible. Yeah. We so, can do it uh, later. If you have any <laughs> question you want to answer already? Or yeah, you yeah. Want yeah. To maybe continue? before I forget your question, <laughs> uh, you know, it's late. So for, for two hours ahead of you in terms of the time zone here. Uh, so who knows what time it is anyway um, so the questions of uh, um, they had been activists for two years when I met them uh, the, or, um, it's true that you know they don't talk about that in this, or the, the, the film doesn't make that clear uh, so in 2010 was the fall of 2010 when I met them uh, during that conference was the time when they actually were beginning to be public. So 
So that was the first time that they were giving interviews in the newspapers. Uh, and they had gotten together and, and established their organization in 2008. Uh, so when I was filming them, they were three years of, they had been activists for three years. But again, activism, again, has these different levels, right? So you can get together and become activists as long as you stay in your own space. But to become a public activist, meaning giving interviews in the press, on television, et cetera, et cetera, that's another, obviously, level of act activism that we need to be uh, a bit more comfortable about your position as in the society <coughs> as uh, head and not absolute head. But, um, and uh, let me tell you another story. Uh, so at the end of the conference, when I was you know, driving and listening to the stories, I went up to them and I introduced myself. I said, I'm a professor here. I'm also a documentary filmmaker. Um, and I would, because I had, I was so moved that I made the decision already in 90 minutes of, you know, entering the room and, and at, the end, at the end of the panel, it's only been 90 minutes. And I had no idea that I was going to make a film. And at the end of the 90 minutes, I, I was saying, I have to make this film. And that is a very, not a very typical experience for a documentary filmmaker. You usually, you know, think a lot about these things. So it was kind of like this impulsive thing, maybe, uh, luckily. And so I went up to them anyway, and I said, you know, this is who I am, and I would like to make a documentary film with you. And they said, their response was, we've been waiting for you. <laughs> and, I, and I was in complete shock, because as a documentary filmmaker, you don't hear those things, right? I mean, I've been waiting for you. And I was in shock, so I said, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean you've been waiting for me? It's like this, like, you know, spiritual experience almost. Anyway, I... And they said, well, they said two years ago, in 2008, we were invited to Italy uh, by the family group in Italy. And they had shown us a film there. And the film is actually in the film. So there's this intertextuality going on in the film. In the cafe where they meet, uh, in the beginning, uh, the parent of the lesbian woman, the father, is sitting there. And he's like opening a DVD case. And looking at it, and that is the film of the Italian family group. And uh, so they had seen this film, uh, you know, with, with a mixed audience, like <coughs> mixed meaning, uh, you know, uh, Italian people and, and, and visitors from Turkey. And, um, and at the end of the film, they were crying, of course, during the film. Uh, the lights uh, come up, uh, and then they realized that the parents are sitting next to them and they, you know, started to hug each other, etc., etc. And then they started reflecting on this. They said, oh, wonderful, they have a film, they have a documentary film, we can show this in Turkey, let's, you know, get, uh, bring the film to Turkey and then put Turkish subtitles. And they did that, by the way, that was you know, part of their uh, activism. Uh, but they were also discussing among themselves and they were saying, well, they have, you know, they have Christianity, they have this hope. You know, it's different, you know. Wouldn't, wouldn't it be nice if we had our own documentary where we can tell our own stories? So they had already been thinking about this, and it was just a coincidence, luck or whatever, life, and that brought us together. So they responded in that way by saying, we've been waiting for you. So uh, that was the uh, you know, beginning of our um, collaboration, because it was really a, a collaboration. It still is. We still work together. I'm, I've been part of the organization as a as a volunteer. And Metehan, who appears in the film, is one of the activists. Uh, he's been um, uh, a co-producer uh, of the documentary. So uh, you know, Listak as a group has also been part of making of the film. Um, and also the proceeding, the the. the um, um, any income that we have from this film, like screening fees that we get, or awards, also there are no monetary awards, anyway, screening fees or any distribution income that we get, a certain percentage of that goes to the uh, family group. Um, and in terms of um, the second question, uh, yes, I mean, that stigma is there, and that is the biggest challenge. What would others say? How would I be seen as a parent of uh, in this uh, homophobic and transphobic society. Uh, and obviously these parents are um, um, a, a minority. Uh, 
uh, was able to uh, take on that challenge and face the society. Uh, one of the parents say, uh, Omar, one of the fathers say even, that the biggest uh, uh, terrorist organization in Turkey uh, is, uh, is the society, uh, the homophobic transphobic society. In Turkey, she says, Türkiye'deki en büyük terör organizasyonu or, e, terör grubu El Alem. Something about the notion of family. I, I personally got involved in equal rights for sexual minorities 25 years ago. And at that time, the idea of putting together you know, the same sentence, homosexuality and family, was almost impossible. And I think most of the movement in the last 25 years in France and in many other countries has been in that direction, putting them together, basically gays and lesbians can have family. Um, but there was an alternative story that I was also very interested in. There was a book in the US by an anthropologist named Cap Weston uh, called Families We Choose. It was in the context of AIDS. Uh, and when biological families or families of origin rejected many gay men in particular because of AIDS, and so the family became something different. It was not the family you were born in, it was the family you formed with various people, former lovers, or friends, or your own children, or sometimes a former spouse, etc. Uh, so it was an alternative vision of the family. What I thought was interesting in this film, in this documentary, is that on the one hand, it's not Gays can have children, but gays have parents, uh, gays and lesbians, etc. Uh, and second, uh, what I thought was interesting is at one point you have parents hugging and saying, oh, you're my family, which means it's the Cap Weston model, yes. the alternative family, the family they choose. And so I thought that it was a combination of the two, which I believe is quite rare and very moving. Thank you, thank you, yeah. Yeah, and, and it's strange also because as a uh, as gay man, when I watch the film, I can realize that somehow I'm wondering during the film, can, uh, can I'm, am I able to be a parent myself? Like, mm -hmm. so, so it's like you, you start from like parents of LGBT people, but in the end, it, it crossed the question of homo, homo parentality somehow, or potential. So it's like a circle that uh, crossed. But did you, from the beginning, um, address your film to parents, heterosexual parents that have uh, LGBT children, or did you also address your film to gay, lesbian, and potential homo parental uh, persons? Uh, address my film in the sense of what exactly? In the sense that did you come on, come on? Which audience did you expect okay. in okay. front okay. of okay. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. sorry. Sorry. No, 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 no. no. no need to be sorry. Uh, uh, well, uh, from the beginning, uh, the goal was the general public. And when I say general public in Turkey, of course, uh, as you can imagine, it's traditional homophobic, transphobic uh, public. Uh, so that was the target. Uh, that's why the film is structured in this way. That's why even the poster is designed for in that way. Uh, for example, if you remember the poster, you have baby shoes. Uh, and also it says a family movie. Uh, so. Uh, the reason for that is, uh, you know, um, the stress was on the fam uh, family movie. 
uh, we really wanted the general public, uh, you know, not to be scared of the film, mm -hmm. and not to push it aside by saying, "Oh, this is a, you know, a LGBTI plus related film. Oh, this is a rainbow film. I, I don't want this to have anything to do with it." Because you know, we live in a society that also one of the mothers told me the story. Uh, she was distributing pamphlets during one of the pride marches, and people were, you know, taking the pamphlet because you know that's how things when somebody distributes the uh, pamphlet in the in, in the public you usually take it and look at it and when and the people who took the, uh, took the pamphlet and as soon as they realized that it was the lgbt uh, i plus related topic they would do this ah oh! they would just like you know get rid of it as if you know it's like something contagious that mm -hmm. if they held on to it you know, they would immediately become LGBT, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's like, you know, virus before COVID. Uh, uh, anyway, so, uh, you know, it's, it's that kind of a society. So we really wanted to target um, this general uh, center of that society. And that's why we uh, not only uh, structured the film like this, but we also structured and, and designed the publicity of the film like this. And as we all know right now, the film also starts with uh, you know something that anybody could relate to. You know, uh, you know how they were born, how they were brought up, how they met their spouses, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Everything is quite kind of like heteronormative for a while, and then all of a sudden it becomes queer. Um, so um, that's how uh, we intend to. Uh, that's that's the audience that we targeted. But also, obviously, I think the, 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 the point that you made is very uh, important that the film is not just about one thing, obviously. It also uh, has many different levels. Uh, not only it talks about you know, homophobia, transphobia, um, and expectations, and stigma, et cetera, et cetera. But it also, I think, talks about uh, uh, you know, what it means to be a parent. So regardless of your you know, uh, gender identity or your sexual orientation, you can also reflect on that issue. Uh, that issue. Which is completely universal. Exactly. Uh, and, and I think being a child is very universal, and also being a, a parent is very universal. If you choose to be a parent at some point, or, or uh, even if you're not a parent in your relationships with children, like this film is used a lot uh, by um, educa educational uh, schools and faculty of education, etc., in their training of, for example, um, um, teachers, uh, kindergarten teachers, uh, primary school teachers. At my university, almost every student gets to see this film, either in an education course or even a you know, sociology course or whatever. And so it's really used to, in a way, train people who are going to be in their professional lives um, in, in, in working with children. Uh, either as teachers or as 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 sometimes counseling, uh, 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 psycholo psychological counselors, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I think it's very important that those people realize that there are students like this, uh, there are children like this, and they have a responsibility to be there for them. Questions? Yes. Bonsoir, euh, merci pour votre film et merci pour votre présence. Je n'ai pas essayé de poser la question en anglais, mais euh, je voulais. Voilà. Enfin, en fait, est, il y a assez peu question de, de religion euh, et, de, et de Dieu euh, dans le film. Je voulais savoir si les personnes que vous avez interviewées sont des personnes qui sont religieuses et si oui, est-ce que ça a modifié euh, leur croyance et, et voilà. De façon être un peu plus général aussi, est-ce que, est que la religion conditionne un état d'homophobie et de transphobie dans la société turque ou est-ce que, est, enfin, est -ce que ça, elle, ça tire ses origines d'autre chose Je ne pense pas que c'est la religion qui est la source de l'homophobie et de la transphobie. Parce qu'il y a tellement d'exemples, et je veux que vous inclure dans le film, Um, um, in general, in Turkey, the people's relationship with religion obviously uh, varies a lot. I mean, there's a lot of uh, uh, a 
variety of uh, uh, relationships with uh, religion, even though Turkey is uh, predominantly a Muslim country, not uh, everybody is a practicing Muslim, obviously, and especially with the secular um, tradition that exists in Turkey, um, a lot of people's uh, relationship with uh, religion, I think, is um, quite superficial. Um, um, and in the film, there, there's some talk about that, and I'm sure you follow it. Uh, you know, one parent says that when she discovered that her son is gay, she starts praying, even though she doesn't normally pray. And then she prays and prays and prays, and she realizes that it doesn't make any difference whether she prays or not. Uh, so, uh, on the other hand, uh, there, there is a, um, a woman with a headscarf, uh, you know, who's seen very as a very tradition, and I'm, I'm sure she is uh, religious too. Um, but at the same time, she seems to be the most liberal of parents almost. And she talks about meeting the lovers of uh, uh, his son and having a good time with them, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and then uh, the, the 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 cop, the man who's a gynecologist, uh, talks about. Uh, his father and mother, and especially his mother saying that if it comes from God, you know, we accept it, you know, who are we to say, you know, say something against that. Uh, well, that family is not Sunni Muslim, but they're Alevis, uh, so that is a difference maybe. Um, uh, I think, uh, and also there are stories of very secular parents uh, highly educated parents uh, who, when their son comes up to them as, 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 and uh, he says that he's gay, uh, he, they said, their law professors, they said uh, that either he should go abroad, live somewhere else, or he should commit suicide. You know, that has nothing to do with religion now. Um, but uh, obviously, um, religion is used as a kind of background or a, a source to kind of uh, foster this homophobia and transphobia in Turkey. And that happened at Boğaziçi University uh, in the beginning of the um, resistance. There was an um, art exhibit that was organized by a group of students. And one of the collage works um, had um, uh, some religious symbols as well as LGBTI plus uh, flags. And that created a lot of um, uh, problems uh, because the s uh, government uh, attacked this uh, artwork and, and the students who organized it, saying that it's blasphemous and it's anti-religion and et cetera, et cetera. And they used it uh, to, to criminalize uh, students. So, um, I think religion is used a lot, uh, but I don't think it's necessarily the, the main source of homophobia. Uh, I will try in English, is forgiveness is not a problem. In fact, that's not a question. I just want to, to thank you for the movie because uh, since a long time ago when I was a teenager, and I have discovered and I am gay. Uh, the, in, even nowadays, I said, what are inside the mind of my parents? And your movie answer, give me a lot of answers now. That's all. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, um, well, uh, one one of the co-producers, as I told you, is Metehan, and, and he's gay, and he is he's been part of the team. And uh, it was very important for me to include as many as LGBTI plus uh, members in the team as possible. Uh, so the um, assistant director 
who is also in the film as an activist. He is the uh, man uh, wearing this black shiny uh, oh, okay. uh, nice uh, jacket uh, <laughs> and kind of uh, going like this during the Pride March. Um, so Boy Sun was also the son of uh, Sema, one of the uh, mothers in the film. Uh, so he, he I, I asked him to be um, uh, the assistant director because uh, he was already producing uh, documentary uh, films uh, with another student of former student of mine. So I knew about their work <coughs> and I wanted to uh, work with them. Um, and also um, uh, in the production crew there were probably <coughs> 30 plus uh, um, uh, people involved. Um, and also Mehmet, uh, who is one of the activists in the film, uh, he was an advisor uh, to the film because it was very important for me to uh, make sure that the film politically uh, was uh, um, uh, kind of uh, had the right orientation and was not making any mistakes, so to speak, politically. And, uh, and I wouldn't necessarily know that perfectly. So I wanted to make sure that there are people from the LGBTI community in the film, uh, in, in the production of the film, uh, who would uh, make sure that we stay on the right course. Um, also, uh, not an answer to your question, but another thing came to my mind. Um, uh, it was very important for us to make sure that the people who appear in the film um, are satisfied with the representation that this film offers. Uh, so we had uh, different screenings before we came out with the came uh, before the film became public. We we uh, showed the film to the main characters as well as their children because it was very important for me to make sure that um, uh, uh, that they were also okay with this film. Autre question, peut-être. I have a question related to this one. Uh, your film is really concentrated on Istanbul context. Uh, uh, one of the biggest organizations in Turkey was Lambda Istanbul for many years. It was banned, I think, in 2015, right? Before that, and then it was banned was this year. Okay. So I don't know exactly the date, but it was banned maybe six or seven years ago. Mm -hmm. And it was very active. Mm -hmm. uh, so your film is really about this city, right? about mm -hmm. the uh, organization possible in this specific context, which is in Europe and in Asia. <laughs> there is this double identity which made possible this kind of uh, thing. So it's uh, what I wanted to ask you. It's uh, do you think that you could have uh, made such film? somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And the second question, somewhere else in Turkey. But the question related to this also, this is a kind of under question, um, is the fact that in the film, we realize that uh, this question of solidarity among parents of LGBT children um, reach other parts of Turkey, thanks to the phone line which is created. And this phone line in authoritarian context the, the one I know the best is Poland. Uh, these lines are very important, very, very important, because it's the only way for parents or for LGBT people themselves to call and to have advice and to face uh, very difficult situation. And most of the time it's LGBT people that call saying, I, I want to die. Mm. And, and they have to, to face it. And probably the parents are in very difficult situations as well. And probably the parents that call, it's from everywhere in mm -hmm. Turkey. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, did you did you want from the beginning to also talk about people that are not in Istanbul mm -hmm. that are fighting uh, for 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 LGBT rights? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, yes. I mean, I well, I wanted to talk about whatever they wanted to talk about. I mean, since it's a, a documentary, uh, I didn't ask them to talk about certain things. 
they brought it up. And one of the things that they brought up was the fact that they were um, they were feeling that they weren't able to reach out outside of Istanbul that much. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the reasons why they were so interested in having this film made. Because they uh, thought that they could use this film uh, to reach uh, other parents in different parts of uh, Turkey. And that actually happened. As soon as the film started its showings in Turkey, uh, their hotline, their phone line, uh, didn't stop. Because, you know, not only uh, um, the film was being seen in different places, but more than that, there were interviews by them because they were part of the film. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, columnists were writing about the film. You know, there were many uh, uh, articles in the press, which meant, and at the end of every article, we made sure that the hotline was also mentioned. So all of a sudden, uh, many people uh, from uh, in different parts of the country, in Turkey, uh, had heard about this group and ha uh, had, had access to this phone number. Uh, which is, as you said, very important for people outside of Istanbul to uh, to reach. Um, could could I have made uh, this documentary elsewhere? No, I couldn't have made this documentary elsewhere because these parents are in Istanbul. They're organized in Istanbul, and there is no well, there is one in Ankara, but really the the, the active group was was in Istanbul. And, um, and I was interested in their stories, uh, so, you know, I could have made the film uh, elsewhere in that, in that sense. Uh, but following the second part, not only um, you know, they, they became known and that uh, their phone number became known, but they also took this film uh, uh, to many different places in, in Turkey. After the film was completed, they um, uh, wrote a project and applied for funding and they got funding and they traveled to 22 different cities in Turkey and showed this film. And uh, through these screenings, they were able to reach um, a, a very large group of uh, parents uh, who were not at that time part of this stuff. Uh, so in that sense, the film has been used as a tool uh, uh, for this uh, activist organization. Um, and, and I'm very happy about that. Because I mean, when we were imagining this film, um, our goal was if this film makes the life of a single LGBTI plus person a bit more easier, uh, then I think it's, it's good enough that it serves its purpose. And I think it reached out to many uh, LGBTI plus people and their parents and made their lives a bit easier. So I'm, and we as a team are obviously very satisfied. Uh, is the hotline still active? The hotline is very active. <laughs> uh, it's, it's usually a, a mother that uh, hangs on to the phone. Uh, some, it's rare that uh, you know one of the fathers uh, keeps the phone uh, <laughs> because uh, I think it's it's some so for some reason easier for people to speak to a mother um, and uh, and also I mean we didn't discuss this but obviously it, it's in the film too um, the sad situation that the uh, that the fathers are in uh, in terms of having more difficulty accepting their children uh, and also um, uh, and yeah because of their kind of uh, gender roles in the society that they're not uh, taking on more responsibility in, even in activism so. okay. I'm sorry to not I'm making comments rather than oh, asking questions <laughs> no, for some I'm, reason I'm, I'm not sure why please do um, so one last comment on my part. Um, I was very interested in the fact that basically the parents' organization is doing pedagogical work. Uh, basically, there's a moment when uh, one of the children says, 
you know, I saw these guys who were saying, oh, the gays mm -hmm. demonstrating, and then they saw the father and they said, oh, how great. Mm -hmm. um, so basically what they're teaching people is parents are not homophobic. But the film, I think, is different. The film is saying we were homophobic. Uh, which is also very pedagogical, I think. <laughs> Basically, that's they're saying there's no distance between the homophobia of the society and ourselves. It's just that we have queer kids. So I thought the, the distinction for me was very interesting because it adds something to what they're doing. What they're doing is we're not homophobic. What you're pointing out is but they were, and they know they were, and they say. Sorry, it's just a comment. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, but, no, but there, there is a question within it, I think. It's the question of what you said before, is how we build words, how we build a, a discourse on our own experience. And, and you uh, give a space, a filmic space, to, to build up from the beginning, the whole experience, and showing how this person, which is a very minority, very few, few, uh, very tiny group of people, built their own capacity to act, uh, but also to formulate their experience as ex-homophobic <laughs> to uh, activist somehow. So. My question would be very anthropologic. So, how did you do it? How, how did you, uh, I mean, how, how could you take this world? Like how, how, which kind of uh, um, approach did you choose to have with them during the interviews? Mm. Because what they say is very honest, mm. very rare to mm. hear. Mm. So, how did you do it? Okay. Well, um, it wasn't that difficult because they had already established their own narratives before I even started interviewing them. So they had already been, in a way, um, performing these narratives. Mm -hmm. And every time they you know, talked about these things, they were kind of um, um, uh, perfecting that narrative, so to speak. Um, but uh, I also wanted to create an intimacy and immediacy in the sense that uh, I wanted to have them uh, talk about these stories as if they were telling them for the first time. And that's also, of course, difficult because you, you know, on the one hand, you have a narrative that you've been performing for a while. And here I'm asking for uh, kind of this freshness, uh, as if they're telling the story for the first time. And one uh, method that I used uh, was, uh, you know, when I met them, okay, during the panel I heard their stories, but after that, I uh, every time they were. Documentary film together and to create that kind of an atmosphere in the film and that kind of an impact, this is the way we need to do it. Um, and, uh, and I'm very happy to say that they're extremely happy with the way the film came out, which is, you know, a very, you know, risky thing, obviously, you know, because people could easily say, well, you know, thank you for this work, but, uh, you know, it's quite problematic the way you presented us and etc uh, etc et and in this case they're extremely happy that the film came out this way and uh, and the reason for that is, is what i just you know said previously which is you know it's a true collaboration i think uh, and um, um, the, the, the 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 team that made this film uh, with me they also included a lot of uh, you know insiders uh, so to speak which i think made the film Uh, well, first, thank you very much for allowing to question this Q&A. Um, 
one thing I've noticed is um, the fact that for a lot of parents, um, meeting with a doctor or a therapist or a psychiatrist is really a turning point in their acceptance of their kid. So I was wondering, have you noticed if um, maybe social origin or social class or finances played a role in the acceptance of the parents? Mm. Well, uh, one would think that it does, uh, because that would kind of make sense, that if people are better off uh, financially, if they're more educated, that they would be able to accept their children uh, a bit more easy, easily. And uh, from all the stories that I've heard, it doesn't work that way. Uh, sometimes people who have more money and more social uh, capital uh, they have more to lose. Uh, so I think it, it doesn't necessarily uh, uh, work that way. Um, if I understood your question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just another question then. Uh, do you know if there are any resources for um, parents who may not have uh, a very high income for access to therapists and psychiatrists? And In Turkey. Sorry? In Turkey. Well, uh, there are certain resources, uh, <coughs> state resources. Uh, so, but um, it's kind of a hit or miss because, like in the film, you know, if you somehow are lucky enough to meet a psychologist or a psychiatrist, a psychiatrist who is educated enough in these issues, then you're lucky. Uh, but that it's, it's not that kind of a uh, <coughs> general uh, level of uh, standard of um, service that you can get, unfortunately, no. Um, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that does answer your question. In fact, uh, it was not a great question, but for again, a command to the can be. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that uh, was a mistake. <laughs> <come Sorry>. to, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> to the commands of Eric, uh, because I'm sorry, John, but uh, I, I start by saying I'm sorry that on that one it will be a good thing, because this is the first time that I watched this film. So I'm sorry, uh, I couldn't watch <laughs> when you put it online. Uh, but this is because, for example, I could have this uh, idea, let's say, uh, when I, I came a little bit uh, late, uh, so I started by watching the uh, actors uh, speaking, and uh, when I watched the first 10 minutes or 15 minutes with the individual interview, I didn't expect that they will become actors. And at the end, and after the comment of Eric, I thought that the, the uh, individuals or the actors help in a actor's, with the actor's performance to the comments of Eric. Because they played at the first part, in the first part of the film. They played their own past. Because I really watched the, uh, how can I say, the the actors or the persons suffering from the, uh, the, uh, the from their histories, uh, from the uh, what what it happened. That they played, they did these interviews when they they have been already activists, yeah. isn't it? So exactly, yeah. It yeah, was, I mean that's that's a very interesting thing you said. Um, uh, yeah, I mean uh, you know when we. All, when we tell stories, obviously we always uh, perform those stories, and the stories are uh, uh, about the past by definition. Um, and this is what they did in this film too, and it, that is very interesting on a, on a different level, of course. You know how they remember the past, not only how they remember the past, but uh, how they choose to perform uh, their past experiences. And, and, and being able to kind of uh, go back to those emotions uh, because 
if let's say uh, you know you know those they were not uh, that emotional when they were telling these stories you know it wouldn't be that effective and they somehow um, I guess learned <laughs> to to have these kind of performances that is kind of fascinating you know, in a way Personally, I don't like sequels. Uh, I prefer that uh, my work inspires other people to make films, uh, even inspired or related to uh, the films that I make. Um, and uh, there are a couple of films, uh, kind of not necessarily sequels, but somehow inspired, I think, uh, by this film. Uh, one is about the presence of uh, LGBTI plus activists in the Gezi uprising. It's called uh, Diren Ayol. Uh, and uh, I think there are a couple other ones that I can't recall right now. Um, but I really hope that that you know the film inspires other people to make uh, similar or related films. I mean, I'm usually so busy with, you know, filmmaking takes a lot of time. The, although this film was made in record time, I mean, this was made in two years, which is really record time for an independent documentary film with all the fundraising included. Uh, but, we, you know, it doesn't stop with obviously the finishing of the film. We still show the film. We st I mean, obviously here, but elsewhere as well. Distribution, the showings, et cetera, et cetera. That is a lot of work. And uh, usually, uh, by that time, I move on to another project. So I've been working on another film now, which is not related to this, this particular film. What is it about? Now, Turkey is, uh, the government of Turkey under Erdogan is building uh, the country's first nuclear power plant. Mm -hmm. uh, and if he gets away with this, uh, we're going to start producing uh, radioactive waste for the first time in our history, our own radioactive waste. Uh, so I'm making a film called Nuclear Allaturka uh, <laughs> that uh, is about uh, nuclear uh, stories of Turkey. It's a tragic comical documentary uh, and it, it uh, is about uh, about 90 years of uh, a collection of 90 years of nuclear stories uh, related to Turkey. Uh, so this kind of asks the question, okay, now we're at this threshold of becoming a nuclear country, uh, but how did we come to this point of, or to this threshold? So um, the hope is that uh, when we finish the film, will this film will um, help um, the anti-nuclear activists to discuss the issue of the nuclear with its many uh, aspects. Yeah. Basically. Yeah, but it's the most difficult film I'm trying to make right now. This was the simplest film I made. <laughs> you can see why they may not like you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Whatever, whatever they want to attack, you know, you know, I have, uh, you know, uh, I'm related to one thing or another. You know, whether it's <laughs> academics for peace, whether it's the Bosch resistance, whether whether it's LGBTI uh, rights movement, or whether it's the anti-nuclear movement. Check, 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 check. That's that's why I've been a target. <laughs> Other questions, or maybe we can uh, finish. Maybe I have a very last. You said that you are a father yourself, mm -hmm. that uh, in a way you saw yourself in experience 
where you could have been the parents of a LGBT person. Do you see yourself as a potential uh, grandfather of a LGBT person? Well, sure, you know, why not? I mean, I don't know if my son uh, will, you know, have a child at some point in the future. I don't know that yet. He's 17 years old. Um, hopefully, he doesn't have a child anytime soon. I hope. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, that is always a possibility, wonderful possibility. I mean, I, when I became a parent, I, uh, you know, I had the idea that, of course, you know, I can, I can have an LGBTI plus uh, uh, child. Uh, I don't exactly know yet, uh, I'm not totally sure what his sexual orientation is. Um, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, why not? It would be wonderful. Mm -hmm. But we'll see what, what life yields. <laughs> thank you so much for everybody and thank you.